One of the most common questions I get is how much protein do I really need? Now, this can be confusing to figure out because on the one hand, you have fitness professionals saying that you need about one gram per pound of body weight, whereas on the other hand, you have the RDA being set at just 0.8 grams per kilogram, which amounts to only 0.36 grams of protein per pound. Now, that's a huge difference. To put that in perspective, for a 150-pound person, that's 150 grams of protein versus just 55. So which is closer to the truth? Do you really need one gram of protein per pound? So in this video, we're gonna talk about that and we're gonna nail down how much protein you really need and what determines those needs. So why one gram per pound of protein? And where did this figure even come from? Well, it's a really easy recommendation to give to people. It's nice, even number, it's black and white, and sometimes you just wanna throw something out there that's easy for people to remember and that will meet almost anybody's needs regardless of their goal. And it's true that one gram of protein per pound is sufficient across almost any age and any goal for preserving lean muscle and building lean muscle. However, it can be overkill sometimes. Science shows that someone of average weight and body fat needs about 0.8 to one gram of protein per pound. Now, going towards one gram per pound might be on the high end, but you'd rather overshoot people's needs than fall short. But is one gram per pound optimal across all cases and all people? And the answer to that is no. In order to determine what's optimal, you need to be taking all kinds of factors into consideration. There are plenty of cases where a person may need less than one gram per pound of protein. For example, people who are eating above their calorie needs. Those people are in a calorie surplus and maybe they're trying to gain muscle, maybe they're reverse dieting, but the point is they're at less risk of losing muscle because they have plenty of calories to draw from. So the more you drop your calories as you're getting into a calorie deficit and you're on a diet, you're going to be at a very high risk of losing muscle because your body has to get those calories from somewhere. So it may leach your protein stores and harvest your muscle for amino acids and then use the amino acids for energy. For this reason, if someone's in a calorie surplus, they won't need quite as much protein. Another time that someone will need less protein is if they have a high percentage of body fat. So again, if you're getting into a calorie deficit, your body's gonna wanna take energy from somewhere else. And if you have a large depot of fat stores that your body can draw from and turn that into calories, you're gonna be at less risk of losing muscle and you're gonna need less protein in general. Also for their body size, these people tend to have less muscle and lower lean body mass, which means they'll need less protein. People will also need less protein if they're sedentary. So if you're sitting around all day, you're not really working your muscle, you're not gonna be requiring extra protein to remodel and build that muscle, so you're gonna need a lot less protein. And finally, if you're a younger adult, you're gonna need a lot less protein than an older adult. And that's because older adults generally have a blunted anabolic response to protein, meaning that in order to trigger muscle synthesis, they're gonna need to eat a lot more protein in one sitting. Also, older adults tend to have poorer health. For example, they tend to have inflammatory diseases or maybe chronic diseases that cause their liver to kick out acute phase proteins as part of that inflammatory response. So to offset those losses in protein, they're gonna need more protein. There are also cases where people may need more protein. For example, if you're in a calorie deficit and you're dieting, we talked a little bit earlier about how these people are gonna be more at risk of losing muscle because their body is gonna to need to get extra calories. Now, this risk only increases as a person gets leaner. So as you're approaching the single digits of body fat, your body doesn't have as much excess fat to draw from. And normally that's a calorie depot. That's where your body's gonna to turn to get extra calories. And the lower this depot gets, and as these reserves run dry, you're at risk of your body turning to muscle to get those reserves. And as we spoke about earlier, if you're more active, you're gonna need a lot more protein than if you were sedentary. So again, your body uses that protein in order to recover and to build muscle. So the higher the intensity of the exercise and the longer that exercise goes on, the more you're gonna need. And if you're older, you're gonna need more protein than if you were younger. So 40 seems to be that magical age where the anabolic response to protein starts to become blunted. So especially as you age beyond 40, you're gonna need more in order to get that same response that you had when you were younger. And finally, vegans need more protein than non-vegans. This is because vegans are limiting their protein sources to plants. And plant-based sources of protein have a much less favorable amino acid profile than animal-based sources. 
So they're lower in essential amino acids and they're lower in leucine, meaning that they're not going to have that same potent response on eliciting muscle growth as animal sources would be. And just as important, plant sources of protein are a lot less bioavailable than animal sources. So we're looking at somewhere in the ballpark of maybe 80% as compared to the 90 percentile for animal-based proteins. So coming full circle, is one gram of protein per pound sufficient? Yes, it absolutely is. Now, is it optimal? Well, it might be overkill. And is that gonna hurt anything? No. In fact, there are additional benefits to protein beyond just preserving and building lean muscle mass. First, protein is very filling. So this really comes into play when you're on a diet. When you don't have a lot of calories to work with and you feel yourself getting hungry, it's important to stave off that hunger in any way you can. And eating more protein can help with this. And second, the thermic effect of protein is huge. You burn off about 20 to 30% of the calories from protein that you eat in just digesting and processing it. So think about that. If you're eating 100 calories from protein, there's 20 to 30 that you're going to burn off in just processing it. And these are calories that aren't going to be stored as fat. They're almost like free calories. So if you're going to overdo it, you might overdo it on protein. Not that we recommend that, but if you had to, protein would be the way to go. So if people need about 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per pound, and there are additional benefits to eating protein even beyond this, then why is the RDA set so low? I mean, it's about half of this or even less. The answer comes down to what's optimal versus what's absolutely necessary to prevent deficiency. The Dietary Guidelines for Americans set the RDA based on the minimum amount of protein needed to prevent an outright deficiency in the average adult. This was determined decades ago based on nitrogen studies, which looked at how much protein would be needed to maintain nitrogen balance, since a negative nitrogen balance shows that muscle is being broken down and used for energy. But in fact, using nitrogen balance as a method to determine protein needs is pretty dang flawed. People can adapt to suboptimal protein intakes by reducing nitrogen excretion. And this was what was seen in people starving in the Warsaw Ghetto. They were able to maintain nitrogen balance until just before death, yet obviously their calorie and protein intake were far from optimal. So not only is nitrogen balance a poor method for determining needs when it comes to preserving or building muscle, but it also doesn't reflect other metabolic outcomes and certainly isn't set based on what's optimal for health. Fortunately, Avatar uses your age, activity level, vegan status, lean body mass, and body fat, and most important, your goal in order to set your optimal protein target. We also allow users to add extra protein beyond traditional recommendations by dragging a slider. Not that this is going to help preserve muscle, since the original Avatar recommendations we set are optimal for that, but it does allow room for preference. And if you like eating more protein and find it more filling and you want that added metabolic boost, we create room for that. But we don't use total body weight to set your protein target. Instead, we use lean body mass. Now this includes everything that's not fat, such as bone, water, cartilage, and muscle. And this way of doing things is optimal, especially for people on the much higher end of the weight range. So for example, we have a lot of people who are over 300 pounds, and they have a lot less lean body mass because they have that higher body fat percentage. And if we were to set their protein target just based on their weight, you would have obscenely high protein, right? And that really wouldn't be optimal. So instead, we use lean body mass. But for most people, using gram per pounds will work to set your protein intake. And again, most people need between 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight. 